Hi, I want to welcome everyone to this time we have here together. I'm Jason Yates. I'm the CEO of My Faith Votes, and we want to have a conversation today um, about politics. Um, it is a time, and um, as we approach these 2020 elections, clearly this is on everyone's mind, right? And so we want to have a really in-depth conversation around um, how a Christian can faithfully engage at this point in our country's history. So um, I'd like to introduce a friend. Yeah, I'm, I'm Jeff Myers, president of Summit Ministries. Um, I love what you guys are doing and getting Christians to not only vote, but to be active, to be thoughtful in applying a biblical worldview. Everybody's going to apply their worldview to the political realm. The only question is whether Christians are gonna say, I surrender before, you know, right. before the, the issue even begins. There's so much going on in our country today. Um, we see the news and, and there's um, riots happening. There's destruction happening. You know, Jeff, I was reading through Proverbs the other day. Um, and there was a verse that really hit me. It was Proverbs 18.9. It says, a lazy person is as bad as someone who destroys yeah, things. Wow, that's incredible. And I can't, couldn't help but think, wow, we're watching the news and we're, saying, we're getting really angry. Yeah, all those people are so destructive. Yeah. Yeah, but look, if you're not doing anything, you're destructive. Yeah. So the reason My Faith Votes got started is because we learned that there were 25 million Christians who get, are registered to vote, but right. in the past couple elections, presidential elections, they didn't vote. That's crazy. Yeah. And what could be easier than, than voting? Yeah. Why wouldn't they vote? There has to be something that goes below the surface than other than just, yeah. I mean, laziness certainly is part of it, but yeah. Well, yeah. You might have some insights for us. So, uh, Jeff, you, you wrote this great, great resource, and it is offered through Summit Ministries. It's also a resource that we've put on our website at myfaithvotes.org. Yeah. But it's the political animal. Mm -hmm. And the political animal, by, by name, even that may create some people to cringe a little bit. Ooh, the political animal. But the subtitle of this book is, is really good because it says debunking the myths that keep Christians from becoming more like Christ and changing the world through political involvement. Yeah. Um, that starts to create a question, man, what, I can be more like Christ? By yeah. being involved? And being involved yeah. politically, <laughs> right? So I well, think it's that word political, right? I, I, of course it is, yeah, that's right. The word politics, all it very simply means of and relating to the citizens. Mm. When, we, when it ends up becoming negative, it's almost always because there's somebody out there who doesn't want you to be involved, so they're going to make you feel guilty or ashamed if you do get involved. And the term political animal actually comes from Aristotle. He said, as human beings, we are political animals. By It's part of our nature yeah. as human beings. Mm -hmm. So there's no avoiding it. The question is, do we bring good values to bear or do we let people with bad values yeah. win the day? Yeah, there's, there's always going to be levels of authority and governance in humankind and what we do. So it is there, it does exist. So how as Christians are we going to bring the influence of our faith to that process. Right, yeah. I yeah. developed this resource, we did the videos that went along with it, a little study guide, so that people could use it in their small groups in their home or at church or wherever they would yeah. like to do it. It's based on scripture, so you're gonna find as a Christian that it, it makes sense, it speaks your language. But I, I ended up developing it because I saw two problems taking place and it's sort of opposite ends of a spectrum. Yeah. One end was people saying to me, if you're a Christian and you're involved in politics, you're a right-wing bigot, you should be ashamed, mm. right? Shame on you. Yeah. And then on the other side, I saw people say, we're gonna take America back. We're gonna use politics to bring God's kingdom to bear on earth. And I thought, are those my only two options? Because if so, I can understand why somebody might just say, look, forget it. You guys are both crazy. Yeah. I'm gonna stay here right in the middle. I'm gonna work. I'm gonna take care of my family. I'm gonna do all those, all those good things yeah. that good people do. Right. But I realized that's neither one of those sides really represents mm. what a biblical view could be and the difference Christians could make if they would just 
twist their understanding of politics just a little bit. Yeah, so I think there's uh, two concepts here, right? There's concept of politics and what that means. Yes. And there's also a concept of worldview, mm, right? right? And so what is a worldview? And then if we add on this uh, descriptor of biblical worldview, talk to that. Yeah, comment. yeah. Well, a worldview, the simplest definition that I use for myself to explain it to myself is a worldview is a pattern of ideas. And if you think about it, some people think, oh no, all of my ideas are independent. I believe what I want to believe. I'm a free, you know, I'm a free person. But the truth is, what you believe about God's nature, what is God like? Is God a person or is God a force? Or maybe there is no God. What you believe about God will determine what you believe about reality. Right. What you believe about reality will determine what you believe about what is right or wrong. What you believe about what is right or wrong will determine what you believe about the purpose of life. What you believe about the purpose of life will determine what you believe is the purpose of society. You go right on down the line, yeah. and at Summit Ministries, we just we think it's a progression. Theology, philosophy, ethics, biology, psychology, sociology, yeah. law, politics, economics, and history. Everything flows from those initial decisions about yeah. what is God really like? Yeah. Does he speak to us today? What is real and how do we know? And what do we do about it? What's right or wrong? So yeah. that's what a worldview is. Right. Biblical worldview just says we believe and we have evidence for this that God really exists and that he speaks through the Bible. Yeah. Now that's tricky, obviously. Yeah. 66 books and you know some of them are <laughs> genealogies and some are histories. Right. Right. And so you look through all of that. It's not like you can just take any individual verse and say, this is God speaking the way I want sure. him to speak. But when you take the testimony of scripture, you see God created, we as human beings fell into sin. Jesus provides redemption. So the right. good news of Jesus Christ is what we're spreading throughout the world. Yeah. But it's interesting how Jesus put this, and I could probably just blab on for a long time about this, but you know how Jesus said when he was getting ready to ascend into heaven, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, teaching them to observe everything that I had commanded you. Well, what had he just commanded them? That all authority had been given to him. Yeah. So it is part of teaching the good news. The gospel is helping people learn to obey God in every area in which Jesus Christ has authority, which yeah. is every area. Yeah. But what I think is happening, right, is that there's this belief that somehow someone may have an idea of what you just said, a concept of what you just said, but man, they have a real tough time linking that up with this thing called politics, right. right? They think that one is completely separate than the other. I mean, they, you know, are believing this idea that there's this separation of church and state, and therefore, as a Christian, I shouldn't be in, engaged. Talk yeah. about yeah. engagement and, and, you know, why it's not easy <laughs> but why it's not optional. That's one of the key principles in the political animal yeah. course is engagement is, is not easy and it is not optional. Think about us on our watch. We now have a nation with this extraordinary national debt mm. that goes on to the next, the next generation. We have to say to our children, sorry guys, I didn't manage it well on my watch, yeah. so now you have to inherit this problem. It's the opposite of the way our founders saw this. Even Thomas Paine, who was an atheist or at least an agnostic as a founder, said, if there must be, if there cannot be peace or if there must be war, let it be in my day mm. so that my children may have peace. Now we've flipped it and yeah. we've said, I want to have peace now. Forget what happens to my kids yeah. later on. So if we want our children to be able to talk to their children about freedom and about what it means to be able to live a good flourishing life, we need to be involved. Now, when people say, well, I can't get involved in politics, what they're usually doing is picturing something, right? That I'm flying the flag, I have this candidate, he's all good, no bad, I excuse all of his flaws and so forth, and I have to account for every single thing that person does. Right. And then we recoil against that. Well, of course we recoil against that because it feels a little, it feels like hero worship. Yeah, right? sure it does. But, but if we were to really get 
those, especially those myths about politics and grapple with them, I think we'd have a totally different and much more confident perspective as Christians. You know, you open up this book, um, this study, with a pretty bold comment um, <laughs> in, in saying that, uh, that there's a shocking apathy yeah. when it comes to getting involved and Christians that are displaying this level of apathy are, you say, chronological narcissists. <laughs> but it goes to what yeah. you just said, that they're ignorant of the past and careless of the future. I don't know if anybody else has ever used that term chronological narcissism before, but <laughs> that's kind of what we're dealing with. If, if yeah. we are ignorant of the past and we're careless of the future, then we, we are the kind of people being talked about in Proverbs. We're not wise, yeah. we're being fools. Yeah. So let's get into some of the study. I'd love to yeah. kind of explore some of this because it is so good. But I think at the core of this are four myths, Right. four myths that Christians are buying into, or you know, almost excuses for not being engaged. Talk about those. Yeah. Well, the, the four myths, the, the first one is, is, is that God doesn't care about no. politics. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the underlying assumption. If I say, I don't care, then I'm implicitly saying, well, God doesn't care, so I shouldn't care either. Right. But scripture tells us that God's glory covers the whole earth. Abraham Kuyper, the great Dutch prime minister, said there's not one square inch of this entire creation about which Jesus Christ does not cry out, this is mine, this belongs to me. Yeah. Now, God doesn't call us to have a theocracy like ancient Israel. Right. You know, the, the, the church and the state um, are different spheres mm -hmm. that are important and that need to balance one another out. Correct. But, but at the same time, for Christians to say, okay, I care about everything that God cares about. And God cares about his glory covering the earth. And if there are political decisions being made that affect people who are God's image bearers, then I need to pay yeah. attention. I can't say God doesn't care, therefore I don't mm. care. That's myth number one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, myth number two is it's not my problem. Mm. It's not my problem. Yeah. Okay, those people in Washington, they can just go down the path, whatever, it doesn't affect me. It's it's not it's not my problem, is what people say. What's a little <clears throat> bit crazy about that, because I think about just our involvement in voting, right? Um, people actually participate more in a federal election right. than they do in a local election. And you would think, if my excuse is, it's not my problem, you would think, man, people would have more ownership of what's happening in their community at their school, at their city council, but yeah. yet they don't participate at grand levels, at the local level. Yeah. So, Can we use controversial examples or is that? Yeah. Is that... <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for it. Okay, just you yeah. just watched the city of C Seattle, the yeah. city council of the city of Seattle vote to defund the police. Mm. There was one vote against the proposal and that's because it was from a person who wanted more radical action. That's right. Okay, and you say, well, I, I can't make a difference in which who gets to be president. But if you live in Seattle, you surely can make a difference in who gets on the city council. Right. You could go door to door and literally affect that vote and yeah. determine who gets on the city council. Yeah. You cannot say after the fact, man, this is terrible. I can't believe the decisions these people are making. You made them. Yeah. I had a, a class in political communication one time, and after the election, I came in and to class, and I said, who voted? And you know, only about a third of the students in the class had even voted. Wow. And I said, okay, from now on, for the rest of the semester, your opinion doesn't count if you didn't vote. You can still answer the questions related to the class, but if you give an opinion, I'm going to tell publicly discount it, hmm. because if you can't even go vote, I had a student from that class every single election year, every single election year since, for like two decades, she calls me, I just want you to know, I voted. Because <laughs> that, that you, you, you realize, oh my goodness, that is the point. Mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln said, this is government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Yeah. So it is us. Yeah. We are the government. To say it's not my problem is to essentially say, I'm not a citizen of the United States of America. Well, and it's, it's to discount 
the values of your faith. Right. Our faith has something essential to contribute to what's happening in our yes. world today. Yeah. And if, if we say it's not my problem, I'm saying my faith doesn't speak into any of that. Yeah. And it does. Yeah. Well, it can be confusing to know how your faith speaks it, into it. Absolutely. That's, you know, I remember year, years ago, Wayne Grudem, who's a professor at Phoenix Seminary, sure. wrote a book called Politics, and he just went through different scripture passages and different ideas in scripture. But the book is like, I don't know, 600 pages or something like that. Yeah. And you don't have to agree with him on all of these issues, mm -hmm. but you can no longer say the Bible doesn't speak to the issues that we are dealing with because he shows very clearly how it does. That it does, yeah. right, right. And um, I know there are a lot of really good resources out there that help in those respects. So um, another myth yes. you, you, is choosing between the lesser right. of two evils. And, and there's a lot of people out there who are saying, man, I, I can't choose between the two, lesser of two evils because that's even evil. Right. And so right. I'm gonna step out and not yeah. participate because of that. Yeah, that's, that's the myth, that choosing yeah. between the lesser of two evils is itself an evil action. Yeah. <clears throat> and it might be true if, for one significant overlooked fact, that voting is the beginning of your involvement, not the end of it. Mm. So you, 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 you may really only have two point. candidates. Yeah but you vote for somebody and then your involvement begins with the vote. It doesn't end with yeah. the vote. Yeah. You can continue to influence. A lot of my, you know, I've trained tens of thousands of students through Summit Ministries and they have risen up into positions of influence. They have been able to ha exert a positive influence even working for candidates who you would think, I don't, I don't think I would have preferred that person. Right because they realize, no, this person is still open to reason. Remember Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they continued to influence, they continued to talk with the king. Right. They, um, Esther, she didn't just say, oh, well, the king is gonna kill all my people, and that's too bad I can't do anything. She said, no, I'm here, and I can continue to try to persuade him. Right. We're always encouraging those who are in office to do the right thing. And why do we get to do it? Because they work for us. Yeah. We don't work for them, yeah. they work for us. And their job is not to give us our rights. According to the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, their job is to secure the rights yeah. that have been given to us by God. You're right. We should have tremendous confidence mm -hmm. in continuing to influence those who are in elective office. Yeah, there's um, real great wisdom in that, um, that uh, you know, we hear that all the time as a voting organization and trying to equip people. Man, people yeah. struggle. How do I choose between the two options? They're both so flawed. Um, but we also say we want people to pray, think, and vote, but also voting is action, right? And so yeah. really I think that pray, think, and act is a formula for every Christian in everything they do in their life. Right? Am I praying and seeking God for His so direction, for His blessing, for His wisdom? Am I in the Word? Am I thinking biblically around what's happening? And am I taking action? Am I loving others? Am I doing good? Am I getting involved? How am I bringing the kingdom of God here on earth? Yes. Yeah, participating yeah. in that process. Yeah. Yeah, that is, that is so, that's such a key, such a key point. That you're, you're getting people to sort of do the handshake. The voting is the handshake. It's like right. getting your library yeah. card. Yeah. You're just as dumb the day after you, your library card is when you get it, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you, that. have, the, great you have the opportunity now to go get those resources yeah. that can yeah. relieve you of your ignorance. And, and that's, so good. that is, voting is, is kind of like that. Once yeah. we make it's our choice, we might go back and realize, oh man, I don't know if I, I think I would have done it differently if I, yeah. well, are you continuing to learn? Are you continuing to grow? Are you continuing to share what you understand to be true with other people? Right. And not just in social media, but personally, being able to talk yeah. about it with others. Mm. Now some, and this is your fourth myth, right? Are just gonna say, but, but Jeff, politics just 
doesn't matter. So yeah. how do you respond <laughs> to that? This one really sets me off, Jason, because tell the 122 million people who lived under communism in the U mm -hmm. USSR in Eastern Europe that politics doesn't matter. They're, they were freed yeah. from the grip of communism by political policies. Yeah. Tell the 23 million people living in Taiwan who are freed from the grip of the policies of communist mainland China. Yeah. You know, you just, you tell, tell all of the citizens of South Korea that politics doesn't matter. Well, they were free, they're free to this day yeah. from the military aggression of North Korea because of political policies. In fact, I would say American political policies have freed more people in history than all the rest of the world mm. combined. Yeah. We cannot forget that. Mm. And political acts affect us every day. I, I, I will go so far as to say, and I've told you this before, there is not a single act that you can take in any given day that is not either facilitated or hampered at some level by political decision making. You turn on the water, mm. you expect the water to come out clean, why do you expect that? Because there is a political body that has come together to clean the water and make right. sure that it's delivered properly. Right. You, you walk in your door and your floor doesn't cave in, why? Because there are people who put together building codes who were voted right. on by the city council, right. right? So food inspection, utility districts, stop signs. Mm -hmm. Why would you put up a stop sign? Because people crash at that intersection. Well, why do we care if they crash? Because somebody might get hurt and people bear God's image, mm -hmm. right? Every single thing that we do every day is somehow related to politics. To say politics doesn't matter is to almost say life doesn't matter. Yeah. I think people, especially with the day and age that we live in, they grow weary, right? I mean, it's just the constant uh, division, just yeah. turning on the news. The news isn't what it used to be. I mean, the news <laughs> is all opinion now. And people- Are you tracking with this? <laughs> this, is, this is truth, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah. the people grow weary and, and I've focused on Galatians 6, 9. It says, don't grow weary. Right. And then the next verse, it says, as we have opportunity, mm -hmm. let us do good mm -hmm. to everyone, but especially those of the faith. Mm -hmm. And so, That's good. I'm just thinking, in November, we have opportunity to do good. And it's, it's good for everyone because if we can elect people who reflect and, and protect the values of the living God, they are good because of whom we serve, not because of the world you know, mm -hmm. and the culture and what the culture says good, but the good that we can do is good because of whom we serve. So let's bring the influence of that mm -hmm. and let's resist growing weary. Let's resist the excuses or the myths that yeah. say, oh, it doesn't matter, or I can't make a good choice anyway because there's no good choices. So we have to push through that, not grow weary, but press on in the race and take that opportunity to do good. Yeah, yeah. What do you say to people who, who say, because I, I hear this a lot, oh, there are so many issues, I can't possibly know enough about them to be able to make informed decisions or I try to get involved and all of a sudden I'm completely overwhelmed because there are 30 different people who want me to sign on to their petition and give money to their cause. Yeah. You know, how do you- It's tough. I mean, so um, as we think about the issues, first of all, it's an incredibly complex world that we live in. Um, so first of all, I would say is, um, you do have to press through, press on, and you won't become an expert on every single issue. And, but God has created you in a way to press into you passions and concerns. To some, he has given a passion about orphans. And to some, he has given a passion to protect yeah. marriages. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. so who has God created you to be? And how is he calling you into a particular issue, do well to represent that and what he has pressed on your heart through the Holy Spirit. Doesn't mean we forget about all the others, but I would say be sensitive 
to who God has called you to be and what he has called you to protect, right, in this world. Yeah, that makes, that makes so much sense that there are 350 million people in this country. Yeah. One person shouldn't have to do everything. Yeah. But everybody can do something. If we can find an area or an issue that we personally care about, for a lot of people, yeah. it's pro-life. Yeah. A lot of Christians, yeah. it's pro-life. Here in Colorado, we have this initiative on the ballot that That's says right. if if a baby is viable, of could survive outside of the womb, then you cannot abort them. Yeah, uh, I like that. That yeah. makes a lot of sense to mm-hmm. me. And if I were to say, okay, I think that's that's a key issue for me, yeah. then a lot of other decisions begin to radiate out from that's there. Right. I'm going to the community meetings yeah. and asking my the people who are running for office, what do you think about yeah. that? Yeah. And, and you, you can pretty quickly start to see that there are certain people you're going to be led to and certain people you probably will be led away from yes. just by having a yeah. few of those key concerns. Yeah. So I would say be sensitive to who God has created you to be and step into the realm of politics. Represent that as best you can. The second is take action. I really believe that as we get involved, as we bring the influence of our faith by volunteering, by stepping into doing things, um, you said we can all do something, right? What is my something? How can I do it? And God, maybe God hasn't placed in me yet a passion for that, but by getting involved, all of a sudden now, I am more passionate about that. All of a sudden now I am more aware of what the issues are. And all of a sudden, man, I've got an opinion, right? Mm -hmm. And and so that opinion, um, I wanna bring that forward in how I vote as well. So those are a couple thoughts kind of at a big scale. But I also know in November, there are 100,000 elections taking place, right? That's really tough. I mean, not for every person, right? But there's, there's 100,000 elections taking place. That's a lot of information. So leading my faith votes, one of the things that I've really tried to lead the team in and how we can make a difference is to simply make it easier. It doesn't um, absolve someone from taking their own responsibility of getting informed, but we've tried to make it really easy. And so... People can come to My Faith Votes, they can see their entire ballot, they can see where people land on certain issues, they can start to make some decisions. We've got a section around biblical worldview where we can help people um, if they don't know what the Bible says about a certain issue. We can help. We're providing some tools and resources to help them. It's one of the reasons why we're offering the political animal because we want to help right. people yeah. think well. And so what I would say is you've got to take ownership of your need to take action, to think, you know, and and to get involved. You won't be able to answer everything, but you will still if if every Christian would commit to praying, to thinking biblically and to taking action and voting. Wow. Man, I mean, I'm gonna leave it up to God in terms of the outcomes of the elections. Um, I mean, we do anyway, but I'm not gonna be concerned about it because I know His goodness is being represented. Yeah, yeah. That's really that's really powerful. I, I think that's, that's also kind of the answer to what about all those issues that I can't possibly yeah. know about because there's just so, there's so much out there. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you do this. You ask people. I ask people. I'll call up somebody and say, I don't know anything about this issue, but this is what you've spent your whole life studying, and I trust you. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah. I might not agree, and I can. it's my vote, so yeah. I can choose to do that how, how I want. But, but there's wise counsel out there and then resources like the ones you are providing. We don't lack for information. We no, just we need to figure out how to to get the information sequenced in the right way that it helps us make good decisions. That's absolutely true, and that's what we're committed to. I think there's one more issue before we close out this conversation, but I see it so much in our culture today. It almost, um, seems almost to be, if I can say it this way, almost a fad to think that America is bad. Wow. 
Yeah. Our, our primary allegiance isn't to this nation. Right. So let's just get that out on the table. Mm -hmm. Our allegiance is to our Savior, Jesus Christ. But we live in a great country. Yes. So what are you hearing? What are you seeing? How do you speak into that underlying belief that our nation just is grievously flawed? Because I think that's what we're hearing today. I think it, guilt and shame are often the motivations for people today. Yeah. And it's you, when, when you start to feel guilty and ashamed of something, it's probably because somebody has convinced you to feel guilty and ashamed because what you believe is not what they want to have represented. Yeah. So as soon as you start having those feelings, you gotta ask the question, where did that come from? The thing that I, that I want my students to always understand is that, the, remember Augustine, the philosopher and sure. theologian, he said, the, the citizen of the kingdom of God is always going to be the best citizen in the kingdom of man because his allegiance is to something higher than the ruler. You don't fall for a dictator because if there is no God, then the dictator is the highest person, yeah. right? And yeah. whatever he says or she says is what is right, mm. and whatever he sh says or she says is wrong is wrong. Right. But if you're a Christian, your allegiance is to God, you don't fall for that. Right. So Christians have in many ways rescued civilizations in the past from mm. self-destruction. Yeah. But there are several things I would point to. First of all, I think America's founding was right. Uh, that a lot of people say, well, you know, there, uh, there are bad things in the Constitution. It's interesting how our founders put together founding documents that are self-correcting. Self-correction is built into them. You don't have to revolt, overthrow, cut everybody's heads off in order to change things. You can have amendments, right? You can, sure. you can change those yeah. kinds of things. Second, Americans are the most generous people on earth in terms of giving their time and their money even more than any other combination of nations. America has always used its power differently. Think about after World War II. Right. America had 13 million soldiers armed and the atom bomb. America could have said at that moment, the entire rest of the world, you surrender to us. We are now the only nation in charge, right? But instead, what did they do? All of those soldiers disarmed, turned around and began to feed their enemies and rebuild their enemies' countries. And we spent years doing it. Nothing like that has ever happened yeah. in the history of the world. America is a good place. We have unprecedented freedoms. We have the freedom to believe or not to believe, the freedom to print or not to print, right. the freedom to speak or not to speak, or to assemble or not assemble, or yeah. to travel, to vote, to complain, all of those kinds of things. And I would also say that America, in spite of a lot of the criticism you see in the news today, is the friendliest nation on earth to immigrants, to Jewish people, to people of color, and to women. You can't just say America's bad, you know, based on a standard of perfection. As a Christian, you have to recognize people are sinful. So we always have to ask, compared to what? Right, right. There is no standard of perfection. The question is, are we as Americans doing the best we know how to treat people with dignity as bearers of God's image, yeah. and then start with that? So I, I really, there's a lot to lose. Yeah. There is a lot to lose. Yeah. The hate America mentality could very quickly sweep us over and Christians who might already be <laughs> oriented toward thinking from a perspective of guilt and shame yeah. could really fall for that. And I think that that would be a terrible shame. The whole rest of the world, the especially world. developing yeah. countries, are looking at us saying, don't you guys lose the freedoms that you have because you, your hope is now our hope. Yeah. This resource, political animal, uh, I mean, all that you're talking about, uh, these are things that are wrapped up in this resource. And what you've done is you've put it into a study guide and even some DVDs yes. that can be used in a small group setting or a family or even an individual right. can use all of these resources, yeah, right? right? So, And I don't tell you how to vote. I don't even it's recommend important. how to vote. I just, I want the discussion going. And if you can get a group of people together and some of them say thumbs up to that point or thumbs down, it doesn't matter to me. When you get people together, yeah. we're going to have different viewpoints. The key is that we begin talking and thinking about these issues and finding a way to move together 
to solve our country's that problems. We have dialogue and we don't, uh, yes. we don't disassociate ourselves from pressing in and engaging even with other Christians around these really important issues. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Don't try to get your friends canceled. Right. You know, just, <laughs> just say, okay, this is tough. Yeah. I recognize this is tough. Yeah. You have a viewpoint, I have a viewpoint. I just want you to know I, tr I treat you with dignity. Yeah. You are a person who bears God's image. You have dignity. I am a person who bears God's image. I have dignity. Instead of doing this, let's do this. Yeah. Let's walk side by side toward the truth. So, Jeff, you're leading Summit Ministries, and Summit Ministries, if you like some of what you're hearing here in this conversation, Summit Ministries is an awesome organization that is equipping younger generations of Christians to deal with these questions that they're struggling with. And so I just wanna encourage everyone who's watching this, if you know a young person, point them to Summit Ministries. They will be forever changed, matured, and prepared for the world that they're engaged in. Go to summit.org. We have in-person programs when they're, yeah. avail when they're available. Yeah, yeah. And then we have virtual programs for those who aren't able to make it in person. But either way, we can help you learn to embrace God's truth and champion a biblical worldview. Yeah. If you are interested in the political animal, you can come to myfaithvotes.org. We have a worldview resource section. And right there at the top of that section is the political animal. I encourage you to come and purchase that. It is for purchase to use with your small group study. Bring it to your church. Bring it to um, your, your neighbors, um, however you think best. But leverage that resource. It's really important. This November, we need every Christian to vote. We need to because we want the influence of our faith, the goodness of who we serve, to be heard and, and known in this election process. So I do encourage you to get equipped for this election. At My Faith Votes as well, we'll equip you to pray, think, and vote, and to do so faithfully. So. Jeff, oh, Jason, yeah, this, this is, is great. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate you joining us. Thanks. Yeah.